Got another set of questions for the A-level chemistry multiple choice practice. So this is the sixth one for organic chemistry. Remember, there's a separate playlist for inorganic and physical chemistry. Hope you like the video, and if you haven't already subscribed, why don't you think about subscribing to the channel? And as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try them first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So you can see I've already written up the rate of hydrolysis trend for the haloalkanes and the reason. So the first thing you can do is rule out C and D because chloroalkanes are not hydrolyzed faster than bromoalkanes. A is not right because it's got nothing to do with electronegativity. So the answer is B. RBR hydrolyzed faster because that CCL bond enthalpy is greater than CBR. Question two, I've already answered it there, it's B. So we'll just quickly run through the wrong options. So the ozone layer is broken down by UV. Infrared is linked to global warming and modern breathalyzers use infrared spectroscopy to measure ethanol in the breath. Moving on to three, so I've drawn up the methyl benzene molecule and highlighted all the sigma bonds. And when you count them up, there's 15 of them. So D was the answer. Number four, so the only tricky group in this is the amide group. So just remember, you need to have a nitrogen directly bonded to a cedable bond or. So we've definitely got that in this molecule. And this other functional group here is an alcohol group. So A is the answer. Number five, there's all the chiral centers in this drug. And when you count them up, there's eight. So the answer was D. Number six, the formula we use to measure percentage atom economy, MR of desired product over the MR of all. I haven't said products there because you can either use products or reactants for that. And then you multiply that by 100 to get it into a percentage. So the desired product in all of these reactions is ethene. Just remember to factor in the balance in numbers. And then when you do those calculations for A through to D, I haven't bothered putting the 100 in. You can see that B was the answer, got the highest percentage. So normally, or sometimes in questions like these, you can actually spot which one it is um, straight away, but you couldn't in this one, I don't think. So you had to go through the calculations. Moving on to number seven. So we've got the complete combustion of an alkane. So there's 0.05 moles of this being combusted completely and it's made 5.4 grams of H2O. So basically, we're interested in the mole ratio between the alkane and the H2O. So mass over MR for the H2O, 0.3 moles of H2O produced from 0.05 moles of the alkane. So if we divide them by the smallest to get the one to something ratio, we get one to six. Now remember, this is six moles of H2O. So that means there's 12 times H in the alkane. So which one's got 12 H's? D. Number eight, so the first thing we'll need to do is work out the MR of paracetamol. So you can see there's its molecular formula. So the MR comes out at 151. So to get the mass in the tablet, we need to do moles times MR, which comes out at 0 0.4998 grams, but they want it in milligrams, so it's 500 is the answer, so C. Number nine, so the first thing to appreciate is we've got to make a saturated compound. So the carbon-carbon bonds in the product are all gonna be single bonds. So what part of this compound does react with hydrogen? It's the CC double bonds and the CN bond, this nitrile group. So each of the CC double bonds in the molecule reacts with one mole of hydrogen. However, the nitrile group reacts with two moles of hydrogen. So this nitrile group is going to become CH2NH2. So you can see there's two moles of H2 involved there. So that means that one mole of the compound is going to react with four moles of hydrogen. So therefore, 0.05 moles of the compound is going to react with four times that, 0.2 moles of hydrogen. So all we need to do now is multiply 0.2 by 24 dm cubed, and that will give us our volume. So that's coming out at 4.8 decimeters cubed, so the answer is C. Moving on to 10, you'll see I've already drawn up the structure for the ester butyl propanoate. 
So which bond is broken when it's hydrolyzed? Doesn't matter whether it's sodium hydroxide or acid. At the moment, hydrolysis breaks that bond. So when you hydrolyze using an alkali, sodium hydroxide in this case, this part of the ester becomes your carboxylate salt. So the Na is going to go on here and the other part turns into an alcohol. So the carboxylate salt that's generated will be this one here, which has the molecular formula of B. Moving on to number 11, you can see I've already annotated the infrared spectrum. So I'll just run through this. So there's no activity up here, sort of between three and 4,000. That means we don't have any OH or NH bonds in the molecule. This peak here, we always see, um, and that's due to CH, so that's no help at all. This is very helpful. This is a C double bond O. So we can't have A because we don't have an OH group. We can't have C or D because we don't have these NH bonds. So the answer is B, and the C double bond O is this here. Moving on to 12, so to get a triplet in a proton NMR spectrum, you need the protons that are causing the signal to be adjacent to a CH2 group. So when you apply the n plus one rule, you get two plus one, three. So the triplets cause from that. But to get two triplets in your spectrum, you need two non-equivalent CH2 groups. So you'll notice I've already drawn out the structures of A through to D. I think it's easy to see what's gonna happen with a sort of skeletal formula or a displayed formula, rather than the um, structural formula of the given. So if we run through the spectra, so starting with A, so we're going to get um, a triplet for these protons because there's an adjacent CH2 group. Um, the next protons along are going to be a quartet because of that adjacent CH3. And then on the other side of the molecule, we've got two more environments, so they're not equivalent. So we're going to get another quartet here and we're going to get a triplet here. So there's the answer two triplets are going to be in this spectrum. So here's the answer. I'll go through the others just for revision. You'll notice I've got these bluey gray lines through the molecules. These represent lines of symmetry. So everything sort of either side, sort of equidistant, um, are in identical environments or equivalent environments. So if we look at B, we're going to get a triplet here. We're going to get a quartet here, but we're not going to get another triplet and quartet from the other side of the molecule because they are identical environments. So you're only going to get one triplet and one quartet for B. Moving on to C, so I'm only going to consider these environments here because of the line of symmetry it means that this side is identical to this side. So the carboxyl proton will be a singlet, they're always singlets, and this CH2 group is not going to be split by the adjacent CH2 group because it's equivalent. So we'll have another singlet there. And finally for D, again, I'm just going to consider the left-hand part of the line of symmetry. So we're going to have a singlet for the um, carboxyl proton. Um, for the CH2 protons, we're going to get a triplet because of the adjacent CH2. That middle CH2 that's on the line of symmetry, well it's adjacent to two equivalent CH2 groups, so it's actually going to come out as a multiplet. Moving on to 13, it's got to be a propagation step for this mechanism, so one is okay, two's not okay because of that H radical, we don't see that, and three's not okay because that's actually a termination step, so only one, so D. Number 14, so a nucleophile is an electron pair donor, so which of these species can do that? So one can, ammonia can, because there's a lone pair on the nitrogen. Um, OH minus ions can as well, because there's lone pairs around the oxygen. And for three, same reason as one, we've got a nitrogen in methylamine. So all three of them can act as nucleophiles, so A. And finally, number 15, another NMR question, but this time carbon 13. So I've already drawn up the skeletal formula for the alcohols, and we'll just run through each one to see how many different carbon environments we've got. And obviously, that will tell us how many peaks we'll get. So number one, we've got an equivalent 
carbons there, so one for that. There's one, there's a different one, and there's one. So there's four in that one, so we'll put a tick there. Number two, again, we've got equivalent carbons there. One, two, three, four, so that one's okay. And number three, we don't have any equivalent uh, carbons, so they're all different. One, two, three, four, five. So five in that one, that's not right. So one and two only, B.